Welcome, foolish mortals. Don't be scared, it's just me. I'm here with your first spoiler-free review for Imaginary by Blumhouse. Speaking of Blumhouse, before we get started, I need to address them. Dear Blumhouse, or more specifically, Mr. Jason Blum, Mr. Man Who Makes the Scary Movies, or at least finances them. Hi, how are you? I have questions. Number one is regarding that very specific envelope at the beginning of the movie. I'm not giving anything away, but pay attention. Mr. Blumhouse Productions, was that a homage or was it foreshadowing? You know, foreshadowing for your production studio, that kind of foreshadowing. Was it that? Was it that? Leading into question number two. If it is, in fact, foreshadowing, what can I do to help? More specifically, what can I do to not only be a part, but to make sure that part would fit snugly in the universe that it's supposed to take in? Does that make sense? Question number three. So how much did you have to pay Disney? Just out of curiosity. Now onward to what we came for. Imaginary is about a family who moves back into the wife's old house and the little girl finds a stuffed animal and apparently it has like an imaginary friend named Chauncey. And like for the first half of the movie, it's exactly what you think it is, you know, haunted shit, but only kind of, sort of. And to be honest, I spent the first half of this movie thinking, okay, we've done this. We've seen this before. It's okay. I was a little worried as to that's all we were going to get. It was starting to look like Night Swim. But then the second half turns everything so fucking topsy-turvy? Topsy yeah, topsy-turvy that I think it just saves the whole movie. And y'all know, usually I do another video that like spoils everything for you. I'm not giving anything away this time. It's goofy, but it's goofy in a way I love. But please, for all that is holy, do not mistake this for the new John Krasinski imaginary friend movie. Your children will be scarred for life. I do have questions, comments, and concerns, though. Concern number one, like I said, this kind of dragged ass in the first half. It's got a little bit of scary, but not a whole lot of scary. Concern number two, she found Chauncey in, like, the crawl space cellar thing in the basement. And absolutely nobody washed Chauncey. We don't know how long he's been hiding in there. He probably smells really bad. He might got bugs. He could have been in a Tide commercial added a little snuggle the fabric softener because that one's a teddy bear you know you could have at least made him you know smell better maybe at least some lysol number three and it's not really giving anything away because it's in the uh preview you have to find something in the scavenger hunt that hurts pain is subjective so did we really have to do like an entire 10 out of 10 or could we have just like plucked an eyebrow hair some waxing strips could have asked someone on tiktok to guess your age and finally, did y'all really steal the Stranger Things theme for this? It like wasn't even like a scene from Stranger Things. They were using the theme from the uh, for background noise. Was that intentional? Were we not supposed to notice that? I don't know. Anyways, so Jessica is my new final girl. She's not technically a final girl, but for the all intents and purposes, she is a new final girl and I love her. Thank you. 9.5 out of 10 because they did not, in fact, wash Chauncey and he probably reeks of fucking basement. Okay, bye. You've got a friend in me. You got a friend named Steve.